What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's review we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Transformers Studio Series Deluxe Class Cliff Jumper based on his appearance from the Transformers Bumblebee movie. If you've watched some of my previous thoughts and analysis videos you'll know that Cliff Jumper here was one that I was not expecting Hasbro to release, at least not anytime soon, but I'm so glad to have the figure in hand. But unfortunately judging by how he looks in the packaging it does look as if though he's going to have a considerably large backpack. Taking a look here at the front of the box you can see we have a fantastic CGI render of Cliff Jumper there from the Bumblebee movie. The side of the packaging we have an up close image of the character's head sculpt with the back of the packaging showcasing us some product shots of him in both robot mode as well as vehicle mode and we also of course do have a brief bio. As the battle on Cybertron rages, Cliff Jumper and his fellow Autobots are overwhelmed by the Decepticon attacks. And then finally we have another CGI render. So without further ado, let's crack Cliff Jumper open and see what awaits us inside. And so now, very quickly going over the included backdrop that Cliff Jumper includes, here we've got the Cybertron battle sequence from the opening scene of Bumblebee, and I think that this looks awesome, and hopefully will be used on many other Transformers Bumblebee movie inspired figures. I would love to get some of the Seekers, I would also love to get Soundwave, Shockwave, just basically everyone from that opening Cybertron battle sequence, so it's awesome to see that we have indeed got a brand new backdrop, and considering that this is the Cybertron opening sequence, and not the planet of where Cliff Jumper meets his end, it does lead me to believe that they will definitely reuse this in the future so definitely a really awesome looking backdrop and one that I hope is hinting at Bumblebee Cybertronian related figures. And here we have Cliff Jumper fully transformed up into his astounding looking Cybertronian alt mode. Now much like the character of Cliff Jumper was in the movie this figure for me is a 50-50 split. I absolutely love what Hasbro and Takara Tomy have done here for the vehicle mode however unfortunately the robot mode is a little less desirable however we'll discuss that more later on in the review View. Taking a look here at the vehicle mode, if you've played any of the previous War for Cybertron video games you'll know that this is very similar to some of the character designs that we do indeed get within that video game series and I was a huge fan of their alt modes, I always loved the stylistic and futuristic aspect of Cybertronian vehicles so to get that realised here in a plastic form I'm absolutely all for it. Now of course we never see Cliff Jumper actually transform in the Bumblebee movie, we only see Bumblebee transform of whom Cliff Jumper does share a very similar character model with so I'm pretty sure that this will probably be repainted into Bumblebee in the near future but you can see here that for the front section of the vehicle very sleek in its design really elegant panel lining detailing you can see all of the fantastic sculpt work most of this figure at least here at the front section is just transparent clear plastic which has been painted red and that's to give you the effect here of the transparent headlights as well as this transparent strip that goes along the middle of the vehicle we've also got various nuts and bolts here at the top and at the back you can see the differences between the color of molded red plastic plastic to the painted red. In my opinion I think this is actually quite well done, I don't think the colours are too dissimilar and especially in hand I don't really notice it all that much. Turning to the side of the vehicle you can see that the wheels are very futuristic in their design and I just absolutely love how the curvature of the vehicle mode looks, I really do think this looks like a very dynamic looking alt mode and then as we turn to the back end of the vehicle we do indeed have some lovely sculpted in detailing here. This is actually a complete panel designed for the rear end of the vehicle so it's great to see that they are indeed worrying about the back of their vehicle modes as well as the robot modes. As we turn to the underside it will look very similar to that of off-road Bumblebee as this figure does borrow basically all of the engineering aspects from that off-road Bumblebee including some components as well which I'll show more of when we get into robot mode. But here for vehicle mode I cannot floor it. I think that it looks absolutely fantastic and I'm sure that the yellow repaint of Bumblebee will look equally as good. He does also roll really nicely as well so I have no issues with these wheels whatsoever. They are unfortunately the peg on wheels as opposed to pin wheels wheels but here I think they work quite nicely and you can see that on this set they have put a transparent piece of plastic here in my opinion this was used to help deter the collector from seeing the mushroom peg however you can clearly see it here and that's because this is actually a complete red piece whereas this piece is a separate piece they couldn't have used the clear plastic piece here as this does become a vital part of the robot mode and it would have looked very odd to have a transparent piece unless they were to completely paint this and in my opinion that probably would have cost more than it was worth for a quick comparison though let's bring out the off-road Bumblebee I don't unfortunately have any other Cybertronian vehicle modes as of course we haven't got them yet but you can see here that in terms of vehicle mode he is quite significantly larger than that of off-road Bumblebee both in terms of width and length in terms of height off-road B is slightly larger when you take into account this top section 
but you can just see there for a comparison that cliff jumper is definitely slightly larger of a deluxe here for vehicle mode which is the complete opposite once we get them into robot modes so without further ado let's transform cliff jumper now the transformation for this figure is rather involved however the complex transformation i don't think is shown once we get into robot mode so to begin with what i recommend doing is coming to this section here and just attaching this piece here at the back that will then allow you to pull open this and you can see that the gun did just come untapped it does just peg in via these clear slots and I'll demonstrate that more once we get into the reverse transformation but you just want to pop all of this open and then here with this section you'll want to fold this in upon itself and this tab will peg into this slot so just snap that in and then collapse this piece here at the back we'll then turn our attention to these pieces so just attach those take these pieces here and just untap those you can see where they clip in just help to loosen all the joints up now we'll turn to these you're just going to want to bring these down on these ball joints and then with this section you'll want to take this fold this in take the wheel here fold this down and just compress that and then this will according down on two joints so the first joint is here and you can see that will just rotate all the way down and that is supposed to peg into this small port you can see that we do have a tab there and a tiny port however the tolerances just will not lock meaning that the leg is very loose and very floppy which is one of my major gripes with this release this could just be a isolated incident on my copy however i really don't think that it is you can see that it just does not want to tab in whatsoever and it's even apparent on the opposite leg we then want to take this piece here and just fold that down and then we can begin to align everything up to the best of our ability for now and then repeat the same process here for this side so just bring this around and down and then with this just loosen this up and bring this down on this hinge joint and align the tabs up but you can see once again it doesn't lock into place which is super unfortunate come to this piece here and just hinge this section forwards and then with the arms just lift those out and then here with the backpack we're going to want to move that out of the way so that the head can lift all the way up and then just bring these pieces down and you can see two tabs there that these slots will peg into so just give that all a nice firm push with this you're going to want to angle this section out angle this section out very similar to off-road bumblebee collapse the head sculpt down rotate the arms down and here we have cliff jumper fully transformed up into his rather messy looking robot mode now taking a look here at cliff jumper in his robot mode this was the mode that i was actually most looking forward to upon this figure's official announcement as of course we never see cliff jumper transform in the film so i would have thought that hasbro would have put all of their time and attention in absolutely nailing the look of the robot mode and unfortunately that doesn't appear to be the case with this release now when cliff jumper was first unveiled i completely forgot to actually flip this down so i do apologize about that when he was officially revealed i was completely blown away that we were actually getting a studio series cliff jumper i didn't think that hasbro were really going to touch the cybertronian characters and at least not begin them with cliff jumper so when it was announced that we were getting this figure i was absolutely ecstatic however the hype has slowly started to die down upon me handling this release you can see that as we begin to turn the figure to the back he has this huge backpack which doesn't even sit flush along with the rest of the body you can see that due to the curvature of the vehicle mode it does slightly look as if though it hangs off the back and he's got all of this kibble here on the base of the leg and this doesn't tab in all that securely which is really unfortunate you can definitely see here the similarities between this figure and the off-road bumblebee of which i'll bring out a comparison later on with but for robot mode i'm definitely really divisive about it and in my opinion i think the vehicle mode is vastly superior but taking a look here at the details i think that the head sculpt does look really nice you can see all of the sculpting and detailing there we've even got the small crest where the autobot insignia would be and the slight horns that do protrude from the helmet i think that the sculpt work on that all looks really cool and you can see that he's been given some quite nice silver and blue paint applications in my opinion the silver should be slightly darker of a tone perhaps more of a gunmetal in order to match his appearance in the film and of course some of the promotional images that we did have this entire section here is a new piece so we've got a new remolded chest section here for cliff jumper very elegant in its design the arms are just a direct carryover to that of off-road bumblebee however this time have been cast in a black plastic with some red paint apps applied this whole lower torso including the thighs is just a direct carryover 
of Off-Road B and that can further be seen when we take a look at the back and see that we do just have this tab which no longer has the additional piece that Off-Road B had. So that to me looks really lazy and in my opinion I think this figure should have perhaps had been a brand new sculpt and should have had completely new engineering. As we turn down to the legs I think the overall shape is definitely there to what we see in the movie but in terms of the way it all compresses I just don't think it does a very good job at all. You can see it doesn't like staying tabbed in whatsoever and it does give this rather loose unfinished feel which once again is very unfortunate. It's also very kibbly. You can see these pieces here do tend to bump into one another and if they had just added a small hinge here to fold this in I think that could have then tabbed into this solidifying this entire piece but that is not what we got here with the final release which is unfortunate. The sculpt and the detailing there for the base of the feet is quite nice however and turning to articulation this is also quite nicely done. So for articulation we do get a full 360 rotation here at the head as well as a hinge joint which can look up however that's mainly due to transformation. The arms are on ball joints so they can lift forwards and backwards and hinge out to the sides. We do get full 360 rotation here at the bicep. 90 degree bend there for the elbow. A rotation joint here at the waist as well as ball jointed legs so they can hinge forwards that far which is to a great degree as well as back that far. They can do the splits full 360 rotation well, he does have full 360 rotation. However, the joint is very stiff. You can see that this is a swivel joint and does rotate here at the fire. We do get a 90 degree bend there for the knee. And then finally for the feet, these are really well articulated. We have a hinge joint which can hinge forwards and backwards. And this piece here will accommodate the range of motion as well as a ball joint. And so in terms of articulation, I'd say that it's pretty decent. It's just the overall sculpt and some of the clearance issues which greatly deter some of the poses that you can get this release in. And now here for a quick size comparison, here we have Cliff Jumper compared next to Off-Road Bumblebee of which he shares very similar engineering to and in my opinion I think Off-Road Bumblebee is a lot better of a figure than compared here to Cliff Jumper. This figure here feels very sturdy, all of the joints are incredibly tight, the panels clip together really nicely whereas on Cliff Jumper everything just feels loose, floppy and really unfinished. You can see that when we turn to the back whereas Off-Road Bumblebee's backpack compressed really nicely and everything on Off-Road Bumblebee did clean up quite nicely with Cliff Jumper here. He's very kibbly and very clunky. They were very lazy with this release in my opinion you can see that for the neck joint it doesn't quite work for cliff jumper with bumblebee it was designed so that the circular section of his ear would groove into a piece of the neck with cliff jumper as he has a slightly different head design it doesn't groove into this section as well as it does with off-road bumblebee meaning that he does look as if though he's got a rather elongated neck and to me proportionally wise i just don't think that looks too good we do also get the exact same weapons for both of these characters which once again is an inaccuracy if you've watched the movie you'll know that for a very split second when the Autobots are fighting against the Decepticons. Cliff Jumper does have a weapon which resembles more like a pistol than this arm cannon, but nonetheless, I think the detailing on this looks quite cool. You can see all of the lovely painted silver and the black casted plastic also does look quite nice as well. So in all, in terms of a visual appeal, from the front, I think Cliff Jumper looks quite decent, but other than that, I do think this should have been a completely brand new figure with brand new engineering, and perhaps they could have given this figure completely new pieces. I think that some of the elements, especially here for the neck, just do not work very well for Cliff Jumper at all. And here for a quick Studio Series Bumblebee movie size comparison, here we have Cliff Jumper compared next to both Shatter and Dropkick, and wouldn't it be great if Dropkick could just slice off half of that backpack instead of slicing Cliff Jumper in half. We also have him compared here next to Blitzwing as well as Optimus Prime and in terms of scale despite us never really seeing Cliff Jumper standing up with any of the other characters I think this works quite nicely. He's very similar to scale with Bumblebee and he was in scale with some of the other characters here so in my opinion I do think that this overall look works quite nicely. Now turning to reverse transformation the transformation is more fiddly than anything especially here for Cliff Jumper. So to begin with you're of course going to want to remove Cliff Jumper blaster to begin with I like working on the lower region so just hinge these pieces up and then hinge this section up come to this section and just collapse this down bring this piece to the back and then hinge the wheel out and then just fold all of this over the top and snap that into place repeat the same process here for the opposite side now so take this and just collapse this down take this piece bring this down to the back and we'll worry about that later on take the wheel fold that out and then fold this section over the top and that will snap into place and then we can lock the legs together like so. We'll then turn our attention to the back of the figure and you're going to want to pull this chest piece out, fold this section out and then compress the two chest plates. Take the head and hinge the head joint up, take the backpack and detach it, 
on both sides and then bring these sections down on both sides as well which will then allow us to tuck the head all the way in. Once that's done we can take this whole section here just align that up to the back take the arms rotate those this way rotate those this way as well and you can see a tab there that will peg into this slot here so just align that up and tap that into place and that really does help to solidify all of this really nice and securely and then with these just hinge those down snap those into place align everything up repeat the same process here for the opposite side so take this snap all that nice and securely together make sure that they have stayed tabbed together and then just clip all that in fold this panel out fold this panel all the way out and then i recommend tucking in the back section first so just snapping all of that into place come to this front section here tab all that into place bring in the blaster align the two slots up with the two tabs so just snap that in there and there we have cliff jumper fully transformed back into his cybertronian alt mode so that was my review on the newly released transformers studio series deluxe class cliff jumper if you haven't guessed already from this review i do definitely think that this figure is a mixed bag and will probably only appeal to a very slight portion of collectors those collectors who are completionists and are a huge fan of cliff jumper and both the bumblebee movie i can really only see this figure appealing to them as as a whole this isn't the best figure we've gotten and in my opinion is actually a step in the wrong direction as it has some really bad tolerance issues now of course that could just be isolated to my version of the figure however seeing as this is a brand new release I'm pretty sure that it shouldn't have any of those tolerance issues and in terms of the overall look of the robot mode I think that it is really lacking in vehicle mode however though I do think it looks quite nice and this is by far the superior mode so if you are just looking for a cool Cybertronian cliff jumper to display in vehicle mode then I'm pretty sure that you'll have an absolute blast with this release so that just about wraps up my review for this figure if you did enjoy the review please do let me know down in the comment section below do you agree with my thoughts on this release or do you actually disagree with them and do you think that this figure is a lot better than I'm making it out to be in this review? I'd be really eager to hear some of your thoughts down below and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.